I made a brand new account and obtained double and triple 100s within a couple of hours of playing Destiny. And today I am going to teach you everything that there is to know about stats and the most efficient way to farm high stat armor. To start this off, let's talk about what is even considered high stat armor. In my opinion, high stat armor is any armor piece with 60 or more total stats. Anything below that is almost always an instant dismantle. Keep in mind that we are talking about the original value without master working or any added mods. So if you do have those equipped, then make sure to subtract them from the total. The armor in Destiny is divided into two buckets, and the game will always try to split the total stats somewhat evenly between both buckets, so it's usually between 30 and 34 in each. Legendary armor can have a maximum of 68 total stats. However, don't be deceived by this, because I have seen some armor with 60 total stats have a better stat distribution than 64s and even 68s. On the other hand, some exotic armor pieces can even roll all the way up to 71 total stats. This is because they come with a specific intrinsic bonus to their stats, and these can range from plus 1 all the way to plus 3. Here is a list showing the intrinsic stats for each exotic armor. You can find the full spreadsheet linked below. The main stats that you want to be aiming for in 99.9% .9 of builds are Resilience, Discipline and Recovery. This is exactly why most people will run a Discipline Armorer, because in the bottom bucket there is only a 33% chance of getting the stat that we want, in this case Discipline. The Ghost mod will at least guarantee that you get 10 Discipline. When it comes to the top bucket, we have a 66 chance of getting what we need, because Resilience and Recovery both are very useful stats. This is why we usually don't use a Resilience or Recovery Armorer Ghost mod. However, sometimes it is better to use a Resilience Armorer. For example, let's say you already have a ton of armor with very high discipline, but you are severely lacking in the Resilience department. In this case, you should equip the Resilience Armorer. Another example is when you are focusing armor with Rahul and you want to play it safe and guarantee a good resilience roll. Because trust me, there is nothing worse than getting a good discipline roll with 20 mobility and no resilience. I much rather equip a resilience armorer and get a solid exotic armor piece. Lastly, new players should use a mix of both. Focus some armor with the discipline armorer and some with the resilience one. That way you have a balanced mix of both stats, which is going to aid you in creating double and triple 100 builds. The way we focus gear in Destiny is by first unlocking the feature in the Seasonal Challenges tab, and then visiting the Seasonal Vendor, in this case the Spirit of Riven. In there you simply click on Focusing, go to the second page and start buying the armor. If you need Wish Engrams, then you can literally obtain them from pretty much any activity in the game, such as Lost Sectors, Crucible, Gambit and Nightfalls. This armor is pretty much the best you'll be able to get. However, Pit of Heresy and Dares of Eternity are also good, if not better, because both activities guarantee at least one stat with 16 points in each bucket. This means that you could get 16 Resilience and 16 Discipline. Also, when you have a Ghost mod equipped, one of those stats actually is guaranteed to be 20 instead of 16. However, these activities do require a team and checkpoints, so they're much harder for some players. On my brand new account, I would go in and focus armor pieces while switching between the Resilience and Discipline armorer, depending on what I needed. Once you have gathered a couple of high stat armor pieces, all you need to do is head up to D2 Armor Picker and log in using your Bungie account. In here, choose your class at the top left if you have multiple characters. Then select the exotic that you want to use in the build. After that, scroll down to Stat Boost Selection and choose which fragments you plan on using. For example, I am using Torches, Char and Empyrean with this build. After that, you simply scroll back up and start choosing your stats. 
Always start with 100 resilience and then you can choose whichever stat that you want after that. It's usually going to be 100 discipline. As you can see, when you choose stats, some of them become greyed out. That shows you how high you can go. Always leave mobility, intellect and strength unselected so it doesn't mess up with your results. Once you have selected your stats, you will see a couple of results on the right side. These show you exactly what armor you will use, as well as the stat mods. If for example, you want the website to use a minor stat mod, you can usually do that by lowering the selection by one tier. In this case, I simply lowered recovery by one. This will provide you with more minor modes, meaning less energy used, that way you can fit in actual combat modes. I always try to aim for at least one minor discipline mod, that way I can fit three weapon surges on my boots. Once you're fully satisfied with the results, simply click on the arrow to expand them and then equip items beta. Make sure that you have enough space in your inventory and that you're ideally in orbit. Don't try doing this in the middle of an activity. If for some reason this fails to equip your items, then simply hover over each armor piece and either grab it from your vault or find it using them and equip it. Once you have equipped your armor, now it's time to slot in the stat mods. So simply go back to the two armor picker and see which mods it's telling you to equip. And that's it. Now you have your double or triple 100 stat build. If you have any questions about D2 Armor Picker, feel free to ask me in the comments. Next up, I am going to explain why mobility, intellect and strength have become so neglected in the game over the past few years. Mobility simply doesn't benefit titans or warlocks aside from the basic movement speed and jump increase, so you always want to stay away from it. Now when it comes to hunters, mobility used to be extremely important back in the day, but with all the subclasses getting their 3.0 updates, we got fragments and mods that completely nullify the importance of mobility. Fragments such as Ember of Singeing, Whisper of Refraction, Spark of Focus and even Thread of Mind. All of these fragments are capable of getting your dodge back within seconds. I mean, even on the Void subclass you really don't need more than 30 mobility because our dodge already has such a low cooldown and builds such as Orpheus Rake provide us with a ton of ability energy. As if that wasn't enough, we also obtained mods such as Bolstering Detonation and Focusing Strike, because now you can actually use both of them at the same time, further making the investment of your stats into mobility even more useless. When it comes to intellect, we have a similar issue, however, it's a little bit more complex because the most basic way of obtaining super energy in Destiny is by doing damage, meaning that the more damage you deal, the less useful intellect becomes, because it will barely be able to regenerate any passive super energy. Not to mention that the whole game revolves around orbs of power, and mods such as Ashes to Acid and Hands On have become extremely popular, making intellect even more useless. Discipline is simply much better investing into, because faster grenades mean more damage and more Ashes to Acid procs. Finally, Strength is our final stat, and just like with the other two, newly added fragments and mods, such as Echo of Provision, Ember of Searing, and the most important one, Once to Finisher, can provide you with your entire melee back within a second. Meaning strength is really not worth investing into unless you are going for a very very specific build. The last thing I want to talk about in this video is Artifice Armor. This is armor that you can only obtain by completing dungeons in their master difficulty. And this armor provides you with an extra mod socket that you can use to slot in a small plus 3 stat boost of your choice. And you might be thinking, oh well, it's just a plus 3, like no big deal. However, what most people don't realize is that a plus 3 in the right stat can save you from using a whole stat mod, meaning that the plus 3 actually gives you plus 8. For example, let's say that I have 97 resilience, and in order to fill this gap, I would need to use a minor resilience mod to reach the 100 threshold. However, now with Artifice Armor, I can instead use the plus 3 points that we get for free 
and this way I can avoid using the resilience mod and instead use a recovery one, gaining 5 recovery thanks to the artifice armor. And this is just one simple example, it gets way more complex, to the point where you can gain up to 40 stat points from good artifice armor. That is also why using the two armor picker becomes crucial when you start farming artifice armor. So my suggestion is that the next time a farmable master dungeon comes into rotation, you try and obtain at least the artifice class item, because you are going to use it in every single build in the game. And that is all for today's video, I also offer one-to-one -one coaching sessions, so if you want to learn more about the game or you need help with some content, feel free to message me on Discord and I'll be more than happy to help. As always, I hope that you guys enjoyed the video and have a wonderful rest of your day.